Right before I became vegan, I was super, super worried about what life would be without pizza. I wasn't quite sure I could actually give it up. But since I became vegan, I've realized that I didn't really have to give it up. I can still eat pizza, and there's a whole wide world of different types of pizza out there. Just like there's a whole wide world of fantastic and delicious vegan sushi, and vegan enchiladas, and vegan tacos. You can still eat these things even once you've given up animal products. And today, I'm gonna show you how to make a black bean crust pizza. Super unique, super delicious, filling, and it's really fun to make. First things first, we need to start with our flax egg. Flax egg is some ground up flax seed and a little bit of water and that's going to thicken up and become gelatinous and it's gonna help hold that crust together. I'm gonna let that sit while we blend the rest of the crust ingredients. So we're going to use my handy dandy food processor for this recipe, which I highly recommend having. Otherwise, I don't even know how you would make this. <laughs> so we're going to add some black beans. These are from a can. I just rinsed them off in this colander ahead of time. Two cans in here. And along with that, we're gonna blend up some garlic. So this is three cloves. I'm not gonna add all of it, I'm gonna do about half. The rest of that garlic I'm going to save for our tomato sauce. And we're gonna add some nutritional yeast to give it that nutty and cheesy flavor. Got a little bit of sea salt here. And lastly, we can add that flax egg that we whipped up before. See how thick it is now. Cool, so that's our crust. I'm gonna put my lid on and blend it until it's nice and smooth. Now we've got our nice batter for the crust. All I have to do is spread it out onto my baking sheet, which I lined with parchment paper. Now I recommend using parchment paper because nothing is going to stick to it. Get it all out onto the baking sheet, and then you spread it till it's circular shape, square, rectangle, octagon, any shape you want it to be. But make sure that it's about just under a half of a, an inch thick. When you bake it, it's gonna thin out a little bit more. You don't want it to be too thin either because then it won't hold together as well when you take it off the sheet. Looks pretty, right? So this is going to go in my oven now. I'm gonna leave it in there for about 15, 20 minutes. Let's work on our tomato sauce now. I'm gonna turn on my stove, get the saucepan ready, or sauce pot, <laughs> saucepan or sauce pot. I don't know. Get it ready, whatever it is. <laughs> then I'm gonna add a little bit of oil in there, followed by our garlic. We're gonna let that sort of saute for a couple seconds. Just make sure you don't let it burn. I'm gonna have to turn my heat down to double check. I love to see it when it just like cooks and sautés and gets it's frying. Looks so good. All right, so as soon as you see it starting to get a little golden color, you can add your tomato sauce. I'm just using a can of plain, plain, plain tomato sauce. If you don't want to make your own, you can just buy pizza sauce or marinara sauce, whatever you like. <laughs> it always pops a lot when you do this because all the water and the tomato sauce and it hits the oil, it's always a mess, so I'm used to it now. <laughs> I've got some fennel seeds here, some uh, like an Italian spice blend. It's got basil and oregano and some other stuff in it, and some crushed chili flakes. So we're going to put a lid on it so that it doesn't make the rest of my kitchen filthy, popping. And then in the meantime, let's do our topping, which is gonna be mushrooms. For our mushrooms, I've got a blend here of shiitake and these like white, white cap mushrooms, I forgot what they're called, but they're mushrooms, okay? So I'm gonna thinly slice these and saute them with a little bit of oil and sea salt. Oh, I also just remember I've got some fresh rosemary that we can add. Doesn't look good? Nice and fresh. So let's chop this up. All right, it's nice and warm, so we're gonna add our mushrooms. And a pinch of sea salt. Now the thing about mushrooms is they seem really dry at the beginning, right when you put them in or even when you cut them, 
but they really do have a lot of liquid in them. So as these saute over the course of like five minutes or so, that's all we really need to give them. They're going to release a lot of liquid as you will see. Our pizza crust is just about ready to be flipped, which I'll show you how to do. But in the meantime, let's add our rosemary to those mushrooms, which have softened beautifully. Cool. Whoa, here's our crust. Here is where it gets tricky. We need to flip the pizza so that the other side, so we can make sure that the other side is cooked well also. So I have a piece of parchment paper, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna place it on top of your crust. Then we need to place the other baking sheet over the top of it. That's good. Hold both of your baking dishes or baking sheets together with the pizza in the middle and just flip it. Okay? Now let's see if it worked out. Okay, so this one's hot. And then slowly, slowly, slowly take that other layer off. And voila, it's like peeling off a sticker. Um, but that's it, so now, ooh, it feels nice. Now I'm gonna put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes or so, just so it's nice and firm, and then we're gonna add our toppings. And, mm. Now also my mushrooms are nice and soft. Ooh, they got a lot of good color in them. I'm gonna turn this off. Our pizza's ready, well, the crust is ready, so let's grab that out. Oh, it looks good. Mm. I can see that I made it a little too thin right here in the middle. That'll be fine. It'll still taste delicious. But now you can see how much it thins out while it's baking because all the liquid from the, you know, the beans and everything is dried out. So make sure that you make it thick enough, like I said before, about a half an inch or just a little bit under half an inch thick. So now we can add our toppings. First thing I'm gonna do before we do that though is add some more nutritional yeast to my sauce. I add nutritional yeast to everything, especially if it's, you know, it needs like a cheesy flavor because it has that amazing cheesy flavor. And it's actually quite healthy for you. I have a video on nutritional yeast in case you've never heard about it and you're interested, check that video out too. So now I'm going to pour some of the sauce over the pizza. Basically, I'm just topping the pizza. How you would top any pizza, same thing. I love how this smells. The garlic in there and the tomato sauce and the herbs. Oh my God, I don't even wanna put it back in the oven. I just wanna just eat it right now. I got some greens here. This is like baby kale and arugula. So I'm just gonna throw this on as well. If you're making this in the summertime, you can put fresh basil on your pizza. Right now, it's the dead of winter, so I don't have fresh basil. But this will work. You see how pretty and beautiful it is? So now we must add oh, our butternut squash that I roasted ahead of time. So I just thinly sliced it, roasted it with a little bit of sea salt and canola oil, and hmm, that's it. And by the way, I like to thinly slice it. I want all the textures to sort of you know, match. I don't want like big fat chunks of butternut squash on here. So just layer this on. Now the mushrooms are my last thing I need to add. All right, my friend, we can eat this just as it is, but I want to make sure all the ingredients just set um, and that the crust is nice and crisp, even with all that sauce on top. So I'm gonna stick it in the oven for about five more minutes. <laughs> Our pizza is officially ready. Ready? Let's stick it out of the oven. Oh, look at it. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna take a photo real quick for Instagram. <laughs> Follow me at Sweet Potato Soul. Okay, so I'm just gonna wait for it to cool off for a little while and then I'm going to eat it all, devour it. Okay, I'm totally ready to eat this pizza. I can't explain to you how ready I am.
This is definitely a type of pizza that you're gonna need a fork to eat <laughs> for most of it. Like this part by the crust, you can pick this up with your hand. Mm. Oh my god, so good. It's so, so delicious, so worth making. And you see it's like the prettiest pizza you're ever going to make, right? So give this a try. Let me know how you like it. Also, let me know if you have a recipe for an interesting, unique, another gluten-free pizza that you like to make as a vegan. I know a lot of people make cauliflower crust pizza. I've done that also, replacing the egg for the flax egg. Um, I, I don't know, I've only made this one in the cauliflower. So if you've got any other interesting ones, please share them in the comment section below. Also, if you got recipes for those and pictures, share those too. And if you do it on social media, make sure that you hashtag Sweet Potato Soul so I can find you. For this recipe, plus many, many more, make sure you visit my website, Sweet Potato Soul. And if you like this video and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. See you next time. Crazy delicious.